the horrible truth about the World Trade Center attack on September 11, 2001. Major General Albert Newton Stubblebine, U.S. Army retired, spent 32 years in the military, and in his last assignment, he was responsible for all of the Army's strategic intelligence forces around the world. He had retired by the time of the 9-11 attack, and that day he was in Hawaii. His intentions are pure. He is not trying to promote a book or a documentary. He's not trying to increase ratings for a TV or radio show. And he's not trying to get hired for speaking engagements. He raised key points about the damage to the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., also about an image of the object that struck the Pentagon. The likelihood that the WTC towers collapse was by demolition. That our air defense systems had had a training exercise of a mock collision into the WTC towers by airplanes. And that Vice President Dick Cheney, who was in Colorado, turned off all of the air defense systems around that part of the country that day. To watch Stubblebine's interview, copy the link that I've provided. Dr. Alan Sobrowski has a PhD from the University of Michigan. He is a 1986 graduate of the U.S. Army War College in Pennsylvania, the Army's most senior military education institution, where he later served as the Director of Studies for five years. He also had teaching and research appointments at West Point, the Military Academy, and at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. He is a Marine Corps Vietnam veteran. Dr. Sobrowski gave a clear explanation for why he believes that Israel's Mossad organized the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the airplane that crashed in Pennsylvania that day. He chose to interview with a Persian reporter at an Iranian broadcast on the internet PressTV.ir, which is filmed in New York City. It's on YouTube, and you can watch it by copying the link that I've provided. A Central Intelligence Agency employee, an asset, Susan Lindauer, said that video cameras filmed vans arriving at Tower 1 and Tower 2 at 3 a.m. and leaving by 5 a.m. every night between August 23, 2001 to September 2, 2001. This further raises the suspicion that thermite or scalable nuclear weapons were planted inside of the buildings before the attack. Susan Lindauer gave a speech to inform the public of what the CIA knew before the attack happened. In brief, in April 2001, they knew that the airplane attack was coming and they did everything to prevent it from happening. They suspected Iraq. They couldn't stop them. And from there, they decided to wage war against them. In order to justify it to the public and to the global community and the UN, they had to allow Iraq to make the first move. They didn't know when it would happen. They had only a rough idea, maybe August or September. I need to interject my personal opinion here. Our air defense systems should have been turned on 24 seven. And I am very angry at Vice President Dick Cheney for turning them off. Dr. Judy Wood is an American with a bachelor's degree in civil engineering, a master's in engineering mechanics, and a PhD in materials engineering science. And she gave a detailed lecture in England about how the World Trade Center exploded. The attackers made certain that the tower's building materials would break down very quickly into dust. It's a two hour lecture, and so it's in two parts on YouTube. And to find it, copy the link that I've provided. Tower 1 and Tower 2 were 110 story skyscrapers. They left behind a disproportionately small amount of debris. On the day of the attack, 
Peter Jennings asked George Stephanopoulos, where is all the rubble? To watch the video, copy the link that I've provided. If you haven't heard about the Hammer Fund or Hammer Project conspiracy theory, then you can watch a video about it on YouTube by copying the link that I provided. The story is that in 1991, former President Bush Sr. borrowed a lot of money in the form of securities to finish off the USSR after their collapse to ensure that they wouldn't come back to haunt us. And the money had to be repaid on September 12, 2001. Certain people at the Office of Naval Intelligence knew about it, and their office was located in the Pentagon at the exact location where the alleged airplane crashed into the building on 9-11. The two financial institutions that managed the deal were Cantor and Euro Brokers Group, and their offices were located in the World Trade Center Towers 1 and 2 at the locations where the airplanes crashed on 9-11. One of the worst conflicts in U.S. history was the Cold War with the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR. President Ronald Reagan built the Star Wars satellite system in 1983 because of the ongoing threat of nuclear missiles. The Cold War ended in 1991 when the USSR dissolved due to an ongoing financial crisis and internal civil wars. During the Cold War, Israel allied itself with the U.S., not the USSR. The Jewish people had a long-established history of conflict with Russia that goes back to Common Era 1117, when Tsar Ivan Vasilievich ordered to murder all of the Jews who refused to convert to Christianity. And later, Tsarina Elizabeth Petrovna kicked them out of her kingdom. Catherine the Great forced them to live in the Pales, which are impoverished villages. Those living in other countries neighboring Russia had even worse living conditions, and so they migrated to the Pales, which is the reason why the Jewish population there reached over 5 million by 1901. During the 1980s, the USSR began to allow their citizens to leave, and half of the Jewish population moved out within 10 years. You may have heard the conspiracy theory that Larry Silverstein organized the attack on the World Trade Center because he needed the insurance money, as the building's vacancy rate was over 50%, and also they had a very expensive asbestos problem. As the story goes, Silverstein hired a property manager who had experience demolishing over 900 buildings during his career, and then he used his own security company to shut down the entire complex so that he could have scalable neutron bombs or thermite installed inside of the buildings or make arrangements to use a directed energy weapon in order to demolish them. The demolition had to be done in a way so that the buildings would not collapse onto their concrete foundations because the New York subway tunnels were located underneath. And so Silverstein nuked them to ensure that they would turn into dust before they reached the ground. In 2002, Larry Silverstein said that the Fire Department of New York commander demolished Tower 7 in order to contain a huge uncontrollable fire. In other words, it was for public safety. For some reason, everyone who was involved tried to cover it up. That was a stupid thing to do because architects and engineers around the world questioned why Tower 7 collapsed. They suspected that it was by controlled demolition, which led to the AE 9-11 Truth Petition to ask the National Institute of Standards and Technology to investigate their hypothesis, which they did not. That made it worse. Finally, a physics instructor named David Chandler analyzed the building's collapse and concluded that it went into free fall, which proved that it was a controlled demolition. Something else happened inside of Tower 7 that had nothing to do with the fire department. Barry Jennings, a key witness who was located inside of Tower 7, said that the stairs exploded on the sixth floor in Tower 7 before Towers 1 and 2 collapsed. 
Therefore, it's clear that Tower 7 was bombed on the inside of the building, and so the events were not related, or at least not originally. Tower 7 contained offices for the following organizations. The Department of Defense on Floor 25, the Central Intelligence Agency on Floor 25, the IRS on Floors 24 and 25, the Securities and Exchange Commission on Floors 11, 12, and 13, the U.S. Secret Service on Floors 9 and 10, and the Export-Import Bank of the U.S. on Floor 6. Barry Jennings witnessed a bomb explosion on that floor. <clears throat> the stipulation continued to grow. Robert Parrish Sr. worked at Kirkwood Commutator in Cleveland, Ohio from 1974 to September of 1998. He published an article about a possible controlled demolition of the three WTC towers and to read it, copy the link that I've provided. This is a small excerpt. When those buildings were being constructed, shaped charges were set into the joints at key places, waiting for the day when the buildings were to be declared obsolete and to be demolished by the powers that be. This way, they could be taken down one floor onto the next, all the way to the ground. This is also the plan for those highest twin towers in the world that are standing in Asia. There is also the conspiracy theory that the purpose of the attack was to manipulate Wall Street. Unknown investors made over two and a half million dollars in profit by using a financial derivative that increased in value when the stock went down for United Airlines and American Airlines, the companies that owned the airplanes that the terrorists hijacked and crashed into the WTC Towers 1 and 2. The investors purchased short sales which is when one borrows stock from a broker and sells it with the hope of buying it back later at a reduced price. In the month before the WTC attack, short sales skyrocketed by 40% for UAL Corporation, which held a 100% controlling interest in United Airlines. During the same period, short sales jumped by 20% for American Airlines. also the conspiracy theory that the attack was a gold heist. The basement of World Trade Center Tower 4 housed vaults that the Bank of Nova Scotia and COMEX used to store their gold and silver bullion. Additionally, COMEX also stored gold for Chase Manhattan Bank, the Bank of New York, and Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking in the same location.